30, on the dot, perfect time. <coughs> so there's four big topics you need from all of chapter three, and if you just learn these four things and learn them really well, you'll be okay. The only reason we consider them special, in part, is because they're easy to find. Plugging in zero for x and finding its partner y is really easy. Um, later on in mathematics, we use that because the way we solve so many polynomials is by setting everything equal to zero and then factoring it. And we'll be doing this in chapter oof five or six, I can't remember which one. Um, and we factor it being equal to zero and find out when it's equal to zero because a nice rule, we know only when two things multiply make zero, one of them would have to be zero. And so we use the whole zero thing to solve a lot of things in the future. And what that looks like on a graph is where a shape crosses the x-intercept. So later on in mathematics, this whole idea of finding the zeros becomes very useful. But as of right now, as far as we're dealing with, the only thing that's important about intercepts, the only thing that makes them at all different, is they're easy to find, because zero is the easiest number to plug in. That's it. There's nothing special about these points other than that. Okay? <clears throat> so. So in other words, every line has at least one intercept, and most every line has two intercepts. It has an x-intercept 
and a y-intercept. Okay. So an x-intercept. where the line crosses the x-axis. Now going back to this picture, we can make a new graph here. Let's just draw any line that's diagonal. Okay, remembering that this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. What do we know about this point where a line crosses the x-axis? It is an intercept, that's its name, but also, we know something else about this. It's going to have an x and a y coordinate. It's negative. Not, I mean, we, okay, so we do know this is negative in this. Yeah, I could have drawn it over here and it would be positive, for sure. We know the x is a negative number. But we know y is exactly zero. For it to cross the x-axis and be on the x-axis, that means its y value has to be zero. That's the beauty of the intercept. We know it lies on the axis, so we know a coordinate is zero. So it has a y value of zero. That's the beauty of it. The y-intercept, you write right below this. I'm going to come over here. And the y-intercept. Okay, simply is where the line crosses the y-axis. And again, Go back to a simple example, draw it really quick, put a dot there, and say, what do we know about this point? It has an x value of zero? Exactly. It has to have an x value of zero for it to be on the y-axis. So we don't know what this y value is here, we don't know what this x value is, but we already know half of the point. We know this must have an x value. And that's what makes it so easy to find. Okay? <clears throat> the first problems on your homework are finding well, straight intercepts. Finding intercepts from a graph. And this is going to bring us to our second point, which is just how to write an intercept. And you've got a couple different options. But problem two looks like this. gives you a picture and it says find the intercepts. Okay, so this is number two. And we can write it in two different ways, but how are we find the intercepts? So, say again. So for the x-intercept, then, mm -hmm. the value would be, the y value would be 0, and then you just follow where x is at on the horizontal line. Right? Yeah, so y equals 0, and x equals, I mean, this picture. So is at 5? Yeah, at 5. So the two ways you could write it is you could say the x-intercept is 5, or you could say it's a point 5, comma 0. I'll explicitly write that in a second, but you would have to either say x-intercept is 5, which implies the whole comma 0, or you could just say the point 5 comma 0. Either one is a totally acceptable answer. Right? And what's the y-intercept of this line? 2. Yep, you could say 2, or you could say the point 0 comma 2. Zero comma two. Right, let's do one more. <coughs> yeah. 
Actually, I'm going to bring up two more because they're special cases. Okay, here's number six. What's the x-intercept? The y-intercept of that one. And I'll write down the next one what you guys are thinking about that. So it's the x-intercept plus the y-intercept here. Yep, x-intercept is 0, or you could say the point zero, 0, and y-intercept would be yeah, 0, or you could say 0, 0. All right, what about for 8? Now, out of these three, if I had given you the x and y intercepts, you could graph these lines. If I said the x intercept is negative 3 and the y intercept doesn't exist, you can graph that. You say, okay, it goes through this point and never touches this line, aka it's parallel. You'd be like, okay, I could graph it. If I told you the x intercept is 5 and the y intercept is 2, those are two different points and you could connect them with a line. So that's all the information you need to describe a line. Two different points. Right? The one exception to that is when the two points fall in the same place. So if I said the x-intercept is 0 and the y-intercept is 0, you couldn't graph that line from scratch because that's only really telling you one point. You would need to know what direction it went. You would need to know the second point. Okay? So, Another way to look at intercepts, oh sorry, I wanted to write one thing first. Okay. So for this, you can write an intercept in two ways. Okay. Choice one is you could say x intercept is 5, this implies y equals 0 from the words x-intercept, right? So you have to either say x-intercept is 5, or choice 2 is saying <clears throat> the x-intercept is 5, so 5 comma 0, right? So as a point, or as a number with the word x-intercept. Okay, don't just write 5 as an answer to a problem. You need to give me a point. And so that implies it's a point, or you can actually label it as a point. All right, so we found it from a graph. So now we can find it from an equation. the beauty of this is these are literally the easiest points to find. <clears throat> okay. We know
Okay, so the logic's right in front of us. We already know for an x-intercept. Just by looking, and I mean, if you forget which is which, draw a quick picture. And I keep telling you this, that drawing the analogous problem right next to it, like a simple version, so often helps you remember, right, it's like that. Okay, so I would just draw really quickly a picture and go, oh yeah, y-intercept would be a point like this. Zero comma something, right, over here. X-intercept would be something comma zero. You could even make up a number. You could be like, add three comma zero, and zero comma six. Right? You go, oh, okay. The X value zero and the Y intercept. Because sometimes people get that mixed up. But we also know if we plug in X equals zero, we can find its partner Y value. If we plug in Y equals zero, we can find its partner X value. So that's what we do. We plug in x equals 0 and find its partner, and we plug in y equals 0 and find its partner, and that's it. That's almost everything you need to know about an intercept. And in most every graph, that'll give you two different points. You put those points on a graph, and there's your line. Right? The one exception is, if both intercepts are the same at 0, 0, you need to get another point. Okay? But for most graphs, you can plug in 0 for x, Plug in zero for y, that gives you two points, you draw. That's a really easy strategy, just like 3.1, plugging in some values, getting some points, and sketching a line. Regardless of what you know about slope, or formulas, or any special tricks, plug in zero, easiest number to plug in, and then plug in zero again for the other variable. And put those two points on a graph, and that's your line. And you can do that on every single equation I give you. Okay. <clears throat> So here's an example. This is how I do it. Um, for number 10, I write it like this. I go, okay, 2x plus 6y equals 30. I put a little x-intercept here in a box. This is literally how I write it on the, you know, answer key is how I'll do it. I'll write y-intercept right here. I'll write what I'm plugging in. So for the x-intercept, what am I going to plug in? Now remember, what do we know about x-intercept? It has a y value of 0. For it. To find the x-intercept, I'm going to plug in y equals 0. So another way to remember for me <coughs> is I'm looking for the x-intercept. So I'm looking for x. So that's why I plug in y equals 0. And I'm going to solve what is x equal to. That's the way I remember in my head. For the x-intercept, I'm looking for the x value. Yeah, I plug in y equals 0, so this equation is 2x plus 6, 0 equals 30. So 2x plus 0 is 30, so 2x equals 30, dividing by 2, we get x equals 15 is my intercept. Okay, so that's how I write it. I write x-intercept, and the first thing I know is y equals 0. Plug it in, find its part. You could write that as the point. 15 comma 0. All right, for x or for the y intercept, what are we going to plug in? 0. 4? For x. for x. So we plug in x equals 0, so we get 2 times 0 plus 6y equals 30. We get 0 plus 6y equals uh, 30. 6y equals 30. And again, I know I show more steps than most people. It's because I'm very careful. Okay, so y equals 5. That is the y-intercept. Another way to write that is 0, 5. Now if we wanted to graph that, we put these two points on a graph, and boom, we're done. I will tell you a common mistake. And this is really common. Okay? 
instead of graphing an x-intercept of 15, oh, yeah, of 15, y-intercept of 5 as two separate points, like this. Here's my x-intercept of 15, goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So on my x-axis, literally the x-intercept means I cross the x-axis right there. That's what we just found. The y-intercept of 5 means on the y-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we cross at exactly 5. Right? That's exactly what the intercepts are defined as. They're two separate points, unless they both happen to be at zero. <clears throat> and we graph them. <clears throat> the common mistake is, can anybody think of what the common mistake is? Like combining the two. Yeah, combining the two and getting what? Um, 15, 5. Exactly. Instead, people mistakenly they use one point, 15.5, then get creative, right? And that's, you know, people see it as a totally different situation. And so what they do is they go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They put a point here, and they're like, well, shoot, I was supposed to draw a line, and I only have a point, so what should I do? What do you think they do? Usually be used. They go through. What other point do you kind of see on the graph? It's not actually a point, but it just looks special. Yeah, the middle. And so people just go, ah, that must be my line. Right? Which is totally different than this line. Not similar at all. They, they share one point where they cross. But that's a common mistake. People think that the x-intercept of 15, y-intercept of 5 combine to be one point, and then they just draw the line through that point going anywhere, usually through the center. But I've seen it you know, go through all sorts of other places. Okay? But the key is these are two separate points. That's why I think it's better to write it as a point and better to write it as a point. Much less room for mistakes. When people see x-intercept something, y-intercept something, they combine x and y and shove it into one point. Okay, I'll do another example. But that's most everything you need to know about an intercept. Okay, here's another one. It's a 16. We got 8x minus 11y equals 0. <clears throat> so if we want to solve this, again, I go x-intercept. I put a little box around it. I separate it. I write y-intercept, I put a little box around it, okay, what do we plug in for the x-intercept? Zero, one, zero. Yeah. But you remember which one zero. Y. Yeah. For x-intercept is y equals zero. Common mistake is people switch them. They put, for x-intercept, they put x equals zero. Okay. Again, that's why drawing a little picture helps sometimes. So we get 8x minus 11 times zero equals zero, so 8x minus zero equals zero. 8x equals 0. Totally normal situation, no panic. How do we solve that? Divide by 8. Divide by 8, right? Just like if it was 8x equals 8. It doesn't matter what it's equal to. We always divide by the number next x. 0 divided by 8 is 0, right? That's not a problem. Remember, O over K is OK, N over O is no, right? O, K versus way. Alright, so we get x equals 0. We could rewrite that as the point. Alright, the x-intercept of 0 is actually a point. And what would that point be? 0, 0. Yeah, because we have x equals 0, y equals 0, 0. So we could write that as the point 0, 0. So y-intercept, we're going to plug in x equals 0. We get 8 times 0 minus 11 y equals 0. 0 minus 11y is 0, negative 11y is 0, so what will we divide by? Negative. Yeah, negative 11. And you can see it's going to be 0 again. <clears throat> so y equals 0, and so we get 
zero, zero. So we couldn't graph this as is. We would need to plug in some other number, like plug in one or two or three or just some other number to get another point. Because all we know right now on a graph, it didn't ask us to graph on this one, but all we know right now is that it goes through the origin. It could be going in any direction. But all that problem asks us to do is find the intercepts. Right? So, Okay, so the one last thing I want to talk about is just that horizontal and vertical lines. Okay. That'll deal with most every equation we're going to see. The exception to the rule are horizontal and vertical lines. So I'm tempted to just uh, kind of let you guys go with it, but I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you one thing about it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the main idea is what to do with an equation. So what if you are given? and a y, okay? So most things we've done so far are two variables, and then we have a relationship between them saying, if I plug this one in, I know the other one has to be twice that value, or I know it has to be three times that number plus one. And that relationship is what we're graphing. When you're given something like x equals three, that's still, I wouldn't maybe use the word relationship anymore, now I use the word restriction except the restriction is only applying to x. And y has this wild can be anything. So you still have an infinite set of points, that's the answer. You can still think of it as plugging things in. But you get something totally different. So So whenever you have two variables, you have a diagonal line, you have two intercepts, except when they're both at zero, right? The x-intercept is zero and y-intercept is zero. So you still have an x-intercept and a y-intercept. They just happen to be the same. When you only have one variable, you don't have a diagonal line anymore. You don't have two intercepts anymore. And you can't necessarily treat it the same way that you treated the other one. Okay? I'll do an example here. Uh, since we already brought up x equals 3. And then I'll do another example here of y equals negative 2. Okay. The way I like to think about this is I'm still going to make a t-chart. Okay. So let's still make a t-chart. And follow the restrictions above. The only rule we have to follow is that x equals 3. So let's make our t-chart x and y. And again, if you just want to memorize, that's great. I always have to think of y. I always have to think of what's one underlying way I can 
approach every problem and have as few exceptions as possible. So I'm going to make an XY table and I'm going to follow that rule. What's that rule say? What's it tell me? X equals 3. So X equals 3. What could Y be? Anything, right? There's no, it doesn't restrict Y at all. So let's say Y is, I don't know, 2. Okay? Now on to another point. What's the rule say? 3. Yeah, X is 3. And what could Y be? 4. Yeah, 4. Anything. It's like that all solutions, no solutions thing. There isn't even a Y to plug in, so Y could be anything. Right? So as long as we have x equals 3, when we plug this point, 3 comma 2 or 3 comma 4 in, let's plug it in. x is 3, y is 2, plug it in, and we get 3 equals 3, check, 3, 2 is a solution. 3, 2 is on that line. Right? So the only rule we have to follow is that x equals 3. So let's do a couple more points, 3 comma negative 2, and 3 comma? 3. 3. Sounds good. So now let's graph it. Okay. Again, the only rule you need to follow is that x equals 3, so let's graph it. 1, 2, 3, comma, 2. 1, 2, 3, comma, negative 2. 1, 2, 3, comma, 4. 1, 2, 3, comma, 3. And look at the line you get. It's a vertical line. Okay, I still use a T-chart rather than memorizing this. Absolutely, you can memorize. You can say, when I have x equals, it's a vertical line. I'm going to have an x-intercept to not a y-intercept. I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't like that. Okay, for me, that safety net I have in all of chapter 3 is T-chart. Literally, when I see x equals or y equals, I make up some T-chart values in my head. I go, okay. X is 3, Y is something, X is 3, Y is something, vertical. All right. When I have Y equals negative 2, again, I go to my T-chart, make up some points that are solutions to this, that follow that rule, Y equals negative 2. All right, yeah, read. What does Y have to be? Mm -hmm. uh, negative 2. Yeah, and what could X be? 1. 1, sounds great. Okay, Kyle, what's another one? Uh, 3 and negative 2. Yeah, 3 and negative 2. Neil, what's another one? Uh, 4. 4, negative 2. There we go. I like 0 because 0 is an easy number, right? And so when I graph this, I go, okay, go over 1, down negative 2. Okay, go over 1, 2, 3, down negative 2. Over 4, down negative 2. 0, negative 2. And what I get is, a horizontal line at y equals negative 2. That's how I always approach horizontal and vertical lines. And then the question is, what is the x-intercept, what is the y-intercept? So what's the x-intercept? And we already did a problem like this, so there's nothing new. And the y-intercept of this line. Right, so this x equals 3 line, what would be the x-intercept here? So again, the question is just where does it cross the x-axis? Remembering that here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. Right? Not at all different from any other situation. Where does it cross the x-axis? Three. Yeah. So the x-intercept is three. Or you could write that as three comma zero. And what's the y-intercept? Um, so on the second problem, but on the first problem. Yeah, you would just say there isn't one. It does not exist, there isn't one, however you want to say it. Right? And for the second one, you would say, okay, what's the x-intercept? Yeah, there isn't one. It does not exist. And what's the y-intercept? So that's the kind of exception to the plugging in zero and finding the intercepts. Whenever you get just one variable x equals or just one variable y equals, you treat it a little differently. And by that I mean go back to the basics of the chapter, make a t-chart, make the picture, and then I think it's easier to understand. Okay? With all the other ones with two variables, if you want to find the intercepts, 
plug in 0 for x, find y. Plug in 0 for y, find x. The two easiest points you can possibly think of, those are the two intercepts. That's what's special about it. Okay. And again, chapter or section 3.1 and 3.2 are really closely tied together because the idea is getting super comfortable with plugging in a value, finding its partner. Plugging in another value, finding its partner, and then graphing those points and making an accurate line. Or, if I ask you the question, is 1, 2 a solution? Which you saw, that was the first problem on test 1, except it wasn't one variable. Me saying, is x equals negative 2 a solution? Getting really comfortable this semester with, any time I say, is it a solution or is it on the line? You just plug it in and you get a yes or no answer. Okay, but that's 3.1 and 3.2 over and over. Okay, so why don't you guys start now? We got, you know, like 45 minutes for you guys to just work. I don't want to rush ahead. I know people are fried after the test. So.